doing a story for the New York Times Magazine about to turn from like the comic to the serious uh, about a a Native American kid who was um, shot and killed by the police in Oklahoma in Custer County. Imagine being a Native American and living in Custer County. Oh, but uh, uh, the uh, the thing of it is, is that yeah, that uniform and that kind of sense of power. I mean, I'm really not joking about with you. It's a very serious story. A lot of this stuff that's been in the press for folks that have been following the police violence story and, and the race narrative, a really significant piece of it is to do with mental health and uh, to do with uh, um, people with uh, who are bipolar, schizophrenic, suffering from mental breakdown. And uh, that is a lot of what the killing has been about and it, it has long been about. And it's, it's finally coming to the fore and my story will be focusing on that. And, and, and of, of the, the victims? Yes. Yeah, I mean, police get called to a, the, the home of a lot of times they're younger people. A lot, of, a lot of the more severe cases of schizophrenia come on in late teens, early 20s. <clears throat> Maybe they've been abusing substances. They're off their meds. Police get called. Uh, oftentimes they're brandishing some sort of screwdriver. There was a case in Dallas last week, um, you know, alleged knife or, you know, there's some sort of element of threat to the police and they start screaming. They, they, they escalate the confrontation and, and then they wind up shooting these people. So, you know, the tragedy of it is, is that what begins as an intervention uh, to try to help someone just rapidly uh, uh, and almost sometimes instantly uh, descends into this killing the person who they're supposed to be helping. But do so, you, I mean, do, but I mean, do you think in general that's the case? I mean, you know, in following a lot of these cases, and I know that the the even the, the you know the DOJ report supposedly exonerated um, uh, Wilson in Ferguson, yeah. but the other report basically said, hey, there's a there's systemic racism throughout this and corruption throughout this entire police force and and beyond, and the uh, a couple of the guys who were, were singled out in that for, for sending racist emails were sort of the first guys on the scene. So all of the, the sort of a, a lot of the facts that we yeah. presume as facts around Wilson are a function of uh, these guys who uh, appear to have sort of, you know, operate. Uh, racism seems to be one of the, their operating principles. Um, so I think there's like three or four different factors here, and I think that they often come together. <clears throat> One of them is, of course, race. You know, in, in the story I'm writing about is Custer County, Oklahoma, right? Right. Uh, so I, I'll just take that as understood. But uh, I, I, there are other elements to it, I think. You know, uh, another one is, is mental uh, health, and that right. is a huge issue. In fact, there was a, 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 it could be as big as, you know, like uh, it could be as big a civil rights decision. It won't be, but it could be as, as has been had in, in many years. A Supreme Court case was argued on Monday in a case called Sheehan versus the city of San Francisco. And basically what happened in that case is that there was a, a woman in her 50s who was living in a, uh, a home for mentally disturbed people, uh, went off her meds, refused to take her meds. And so the, the head of the, the, this facility emptied the place out and called the police and said, we need to have an, an intervention, specifically saying it's for mental health reasons. <laughs> they're, they're, they're supposed to, PD is supposed to send people who've been trained in dealing with mental uh, health issues, how to, you know, there's all these protocols to not escalate, to use time, all these different things that you're supposed to do with someone who's having an episode. These two cops turned up and it just went like completely the wrong way. They, they kicked down the door. They caused a confrontation. This woman was brandishing a, 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 I think it was a knife. Maybe it was a screwdriver. In any event, they shot her like six times, you know? And so in a matter of 10 seconds, it goes from somebody the police trying to intervene to help somebody to shooting them. Um, and the, the case has reached the Supreme Court. And the question is, what, what duty do the police have in that situation to someone with a mental disability? And, and, and it was amazing to listen to the, uh, to read the transcript of the argument as I did yesterday, you've got judge justice Scalia essentially saying the police owe, no, owe nothing to anybody in any circumstance and that the law doesn't apply to them. You've got from that sort of extreme view of law enforcement is like a, a law unto itself. Uh, you know, Sotomayor and the other many of the other justices were were looking at, you know, what is it? What when do police have a responsibility to do at de escalate and to remove themselves from uh, and not create confrontation? So I think that's a big piece of it. And then another piece of it I think is huge, Sam, is just police culture. And you know, the idea that that you always get to order people around and if they're not compliant, you escalate. 
And that, that to me is another huge piece of it. So I, I agree that race is a big thing. It's something I've been really thinking about a lot lately, actually. And, and um, I feel like it's an important story that, that is more complicated than has been you know, portrayed in the press. That's fascinating. And that's going to come out and, and that's going to be in the Times, what, in a, in a couple of weeks? No, uh, no, I'm going out to Oklahoma to report it right after the L.A. trip. So it'll probably be more like sometime in June or something. 